to worship the Lord in this in this season of Pentecost, we go forth into the world. We do good work for you, not because we have to, but because we want to, and because we are so grateful for your so many, many gifts. I invite you now to stand as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures. Most merciful God, we confess that we are not to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. So that we might find in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen.
And by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. <coughs> Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the lure of evil, take up our cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated for the hearing of God's word. Good morning. Good morning. The reading for today is from James chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with the bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples, the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And he asked his disciples, Who do you say that I am? Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others. One of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, but after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. He said, and Peter began to rebuke him. But he turned and looked at his disciples, and he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to be my, become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world of the world for their life? Indeed, what can they give in return? For their life. Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in the glory, in the glory of his Father and with holy angels. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. I invite you all. There is a piece of advice that um, I'd like to give to all of our, uh, our worship assistants, uh, to any of our readers. It's something I always say to our, uh, to our athletes, or any of our young people who are coming up and worshiping uh, for the first time uh, before others, assisting before others. And they're nervous. As so many of us are nervous when we are serving before others, I tell them that so the thing that I tell myself every single time I come before you and I lead worship and I preach and I teach you. No matter what happens, no matter what goes wrong, I will still be physically alive when it's all over. Don't no, 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 no. Um, I have, though, so I remind myself that becoming, coming before everyone, one thing that helps to not get too nervous is that 
But as what's the worst thing that could possibly happen? Not that, not that much. I've never dropped a baby in the baptismal font. Um, so far, an acolyte has never accidentally set a fire. I have never spilled the key. Okay, I have spilled the communion wine on someone, but I just want to see a long time ago. <laughs> but to say all of this is there, I understand there's that level of nervousness. Everyone has that level of nervousness when they're first coming forward with a group of, of, of people of how to of how to present themselves, or what to do, of how of how to act. I mean, actually, while the book was reading the gospel, I, I have a uh, I have a, a a stammer that I deal with every single day. It was coming out. I'm like, okay, we are going to get in this gospel together. And then everything's going to be all right. And I think so much of this comes from those moments in our lives when, for any of us who've been made fun of, um, who've, been, who've been bullied, and who's been in situations where those that heard use nothing but good words. Nothing but their words to attack any of us, to attack me, to like to tear me down, to me down when I'm in front of others. Those words, those words that can be so powerful. We know this. We know this. And I think that's where the service has come from. Words are powerful things. They are so incredibly powerful. They can create, they can, they can create, they can. Destroy. And even just with any kind of bullying, it can then take someone like, no, I am never coming up and speaking again. Whereas they, that's what we have to do. We proclaim God's words. In fact, you go, you go before it. Watch, I, I love the lesson that we have today from Adverns, these instructions to lead a godly life. That uh, we get in the Epistle of James are about what he calls the taming of the tongue. Now, in this, it's either the, that is done in the way that one, it's like by putting a bridle in, a bridle is the mouth of a horse, or the way that one died the ship. When one is able to guide the tongue, one is able to guide the whole body, and then one is able to guide their own behavior, and then also it's how to then present themselves. Other, to others, because the tongue, I will speak, the words we use, words so simple, so small, so benign, they can cause a fire. And you can get hurt in the most unimaginable ways, only with words. Only with words. And you can with these words that we speak. These words that we hear about ourselves, about others. It is like through these words we're able to then look into look into a mirror. And then through my words I'm able to look into a mirror and then how do I see myself if I'm using hard words? The reflection is one way. If I'm using words of kindness and love, the reflection, the reflection that I see is something else. And then if I hear words about from others that are cruel and destructive. Then, when I see in the mirror, I see it's like something out of a funhouse mirror. It doesn't even exist. And then you'll say, see something that just reflects the words. Words, 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 they're so, they're so important. Now, I'm going to take down a switch to what we heard in our gospel. Because this was all about words, about the spoken word, and about Peter. It's always about Peter and his ability to say the wrong thing. And we see two reflections of Peter. Whereas at first, now, now Jesus is, he is guiding the disciples. He wants them to understand the Messiah. He wants them to come to this conclusion on their own. And at first, they're having difficulty understanding. So who do people say that I am? And they give a variety of answers. And then, that's when, that's when Peter, that's when Peter, he says it out loud and he gets it. 
You are the sign. Powerful words. Words that reflect a great and powerful thing that Jesus is like, yeah, got it, man. And then they continue, they continue on the journey, the preaching, the teaching. And then now Jesus is helping everyone to understand that yes, as the Messiah, the day will come that he is to suffer and die at the hands, at the very hands of the people he came to save. Now, Peter's not having much of this. This is his Messiah. This is the Son of the living God. And Peter then goes and rebukes Jesus, and Jesus rebukes him back. He says that one of those powerful words, get behind me, Satan. You hear that alone. Oh, it just makes my soul cringe. And then what Jesus is doing here with Peter is just saying, you are going in a wrong direction with this. To, to argue and say, no, I cannot suffer and die. No, that's why I'm here. I am your Messiah and I'm here to save you, to save. And Peter, through Jesus' words, needed to be then turned around and see, and to see a different reflection. Because the power of these words matters. To understand that, yes, our, our son, our, our Messiah, but that our, he is Jesus Christ crucified in sin. He is more than just the Son of the living God. He is all things. He is God among us who came to die to save us from our sins. And that was another mirror. It was to look at to see the power, to see the power of the Now, the words that all of us have to say are powerful, especially as we, especially as we witness others, and to not be, not to not be afraid of what we have to say. Because at least with Peter, at least with Peter, he was was not afraid, even when he was going in the wrong direction, because God was leading, God was leading him back, and it makes and it makes such. Such a difference, especially because for all of us, they say that the words we say are like looking into, they are like looking into a mirror. Because the words, our words, are a reflection of who we are, an expression of who we are. Until you look into the face of God. Now we are no longer looking in the mirror. We are looking into the mirror ball. Every single moment, reflection, piece of part, beautiful, difficult piece of part of ourselves is then reflected back to us and reflected to God and we can learn and we can change. The way to, to grow and to learn and become become better, and become better Christians. And all of that goes back to, all of those reflections, they all go back to the words that we say, and the words that we use. And to remember that as we, the way to, the way to live in this world is to be mindful, be mindful of our words. And that's how are our words helping us to live a godly life? And how are these words then allow us to live lives where our, our, own, our own tongues become tongues of flame? And through those tongues of flame, we are then proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ so that all people may come forward to look God in the face. To see their reflection, to see the mirror ball, and to feel that salvation. 
It all starts with our words. So may the peace that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and your mind to Jesus the Christ of God. And by the understanding is your evil. As we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in his fear. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God. He will not be a man to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Christ. Amen. Calling upon our risen Messiah. Let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all who are. Form us into your communities of forgiveness. Call us into new relationships. And give us courage to embrace the uncomfortable and the unknown. God of mercy. We pray for the earth. Guide us to nurture your creation. Protect all who work the soil and who bring food to our tables. God of mercy. We pray for the nations. Direct our leaders to abandon selfishness. Guide us to live according to your will. Protect our soldiers and keep them safe. Comfort their families. God of mercy. We pray for all of us. We pray especially for Pastor Marty and Lola Ruby, Brittany Gratchman, Jody Porter, David Malky, Deb Jefferson, Wanda White, Audrey Maloof, Jenny Mills, Chris Harkin, Diane Urshberg, Tanya Walter, Will Walter, Larry Wiggin, Dolores Gay, Sharon Katzenberg, Randy Sabina, James Ern, Sue Britton, Millie Christman, Maggie Schmidt, Brad Lumpy, and Alexis Fox. Protect all who struggle with addiction and mental illness, gracious God. Nourish the spirits of all who are in recovery. God of mercy. We remember those who have died. Help us to bear witness to your saving grace as you accompany us on our pilgrimage of faith. To the day we all join one another in our mighty resting place. God of mercy. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God, prayers known, prayers unknown, prayers we don't know how to pray, prayers that we don't know we have. Love you, God, and go along. And we trust in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We travel with another and share the peace of Christ. As our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, gathered with the disciples on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant, and my blood shed for you, and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it always, so you may remember me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we drink it. We remember the Lord's death until he comes again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. I now invite you to hold hands as you were able, as we pray together, in the words that Jesus taught us in the Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good for all of us.
difícil. But again, the blessing to those who have individual communions. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ given and shed for you. I invite you now to come.
I thank you for a graceful and grateful God for giving us everything that we can do with the blessings we have to help this congregation. Again, this is an update. The building fund is going well, and it's because of all of you that are faithful servants of the First English Lutheran Church, not only now, but over all of the years, that are getting us there. So please continue, but thank you, thank you, thank you. The second point is just a general stewardship thing. We haven't talked about this for a while, but it's more of a reminder. Um, I see twice the amount of faces we've normally seen here. Obviously, we're coming off the summer months. Historically, that's always been a quiet time uh, from time to time here at the church. Uh, but the church is open every day and open every Sunday for sure. Um, so our general giving continues to be, needs to be continued in order for us to meet the budget that we approved this year. As most years, we're laying slightly behind this year, but now with everyone coming back, please consider what you can do to help with that as well, whether it's renewing the gifts that you give uh, on a weekly basis as you come back, or for those that maybe they can't give a substantial gift to the building fund, but that extra 5 10 $20 on the weekend will help very much again in meeting our budget. So thank you again for that. And finally, a big picture item. You know, when we started this, and we've only begun this, we have the three items that we talked about. Right now we're in the repair phase, but the next and probably the most important phase is going to be the refocus phase. Once we have the funding necessary for this, the council is already working on opening this up to the congregation on what new missions, what is our vision, how do we move forward. So we'll never, we never have to worry about giving too much money because there's going to be funding needs for any of you that have new and interesting missions of this congregation that you would like to see and all the years have thought about and would like to see you prepare. And I'm going to use Mary as a perfect example of someone that stepped forward and decided to leave this thing uh, for the plantings or whatever the case might be. Each of you have so many gifts that we still have never utilized. And this is an opportunity for everyone to be involved in that. So as we get to refocus phase, that's the one that's going to really uh, lead us forward and see what we can do for our community and for the ministry of First English going forward. So keep that in mind. And then finally, uh, the refresh phase, of course, we'll be looking again at things that we can do once we refocus and determine what people want to do. So thank you again for all of your time. Thank you for your contributions. And thank you for supporting First Universal Church. Thank you, Tim. And with that, I'd like to invite uh, Mary Murphy to come forward and say a few words. I'll tell you what the little chapter was about. I said, nice segue, Tim. So, anyway, <laughs> I'm that Mary. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, last week I was really um, exhausted after uh, full day Saturday. Um, we were here with about 10 volunteers that did a lot of the planting, the cleaning, the sprucing up of the exterior of the church, and it was it was a great day, and, and I think you've seen some of the, the changes already. There were some other changes that went through the week um, with planting and, and things like that. And, and we just want to, as a group, thank everyone who participated, whether it was with manual labor or it was um, with prayer or with donations of, of supplies that we needed. Our next phase, next, um, Let's see, October 5th, or the rain date will be October 6th, that's a Saturday or a Sunday. Um, we're planning on uh, doing bulb planting, so tulips, crocuses, daffodils, things like that around. And so it may not look great right now, because some of the stuff is starting to wither away, but by next spring, you will see how much beauty we have around the church with everything that we're popping up. So, if you'd like to join us, I have a sign-up sheet um, out in the hallway. Um, write your name down. If you'd like to uh, donate bulbs, if you've got stuff in the ground that you need dug up, we'll come out and dig it up. Or if you uh, find a bag of daffodils somewhere, drop them off here at church, and, and we'll be sure to plant them out outside. So um, again, thank you to everyone who participated in every way. Um, last weekend that was sure fantastic and um, hope to see you for um, October's event. So thank you. Thank you, Mary. And we've seen so many exciting things happening around here just right now. Uh, 
We just want to draw everyone's attention to uh, yesterday, um, for the second time, we had a, had a table at a booth at the, the farmer's market here, here in Oshkosh, and it was great. Um, we, uh, we, just, we served people all day long just to, to tell people about the church, about God's love, and it was wonderful. I'm so grateful for everyone who came forward to help, especially uh, Carl Kessler, who uh, really put everything else together. And um, as we do this again, the more we uh, the more we do any one of these events, whether it's uh, whether it's gardening, whether it's gardening at the church, or it's uh, go it's uh, helping out at the table at the farmers market. Every single part helps to bring people not just to this church, but to bring people to the Lord, and that's what's the most important important part here. And all of that is just part of our stewardship, and it is exciting. I invite you now to stand and to receive. Today's a lesson. May the Lord bless you and keep you in glorious day, shine upon you with grace and with mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and always give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us sing together. My hope is built on nothing less. Amen.